performance may not be indicative of future results. Therefore, no current or prospective client should assume that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, including the investments and or investment strategies recommended and or purchased by advisor or product made reference to directly or indirectly will be profitable. Different types of investment involve varying degrees of risk and there can be no assurance that any specific investment will either be suitable or profitable for a client's investment portfolio. No client or prospective client should assume that any information presented serves as the receipt of or substitute for personalized investment advice from the advisor or any other investment professional. Welcome to the Bullington Capital Report, hosted by Bill Bullington. For the next hour, you'll receive information on current market conditions and trends that could affect your financial future. If you have a question, you can participate in today's program by calling 216-901-0945. That's 216-901-0WHK. You can also reach Bill by going to his website, BullingtonCapital.com. And now, here's Bill Bullington. Well, welcome back, everybody. And uh, it seems like this last week was a long one for some reason. But uh I'll tell you one thing, I am sure glad that uh, we have gotten out of the tax season. And, of course, there's still some stuff, some stragglers coming along that uh, are still looking for different things that they forgot or somebody threw out or put in a shredder uh, accidentally. Yeah, but I don't, you know, it's just funny. But, uh, anyway, um, a lot of news coming out. And um, have you noticed how much darker the news has been over the past you know, probably a couple of years. I mean, going back even to the pandemic, I'm just looking at a chart of the uh, Russell 3000, and it is unbelievable how much movement there's been in the Russell 3000. Uh, that's literally about 95% of all the stock in the country. It, it covers actually a little more than 95%. And uh, it is barely above where it was in uh, the uh, fourth quarter of 2021. So I understand the, uh, the, the anxiety. I really do. And it's not like I don't feel it too. I'm up invested the same way you guys are. The, uh, uh, but I'm telling you, it, it's not a good time to panic. It's Really, not a good time to panic. And if you, if you are getting to a point where you're thinking, you know, I I just can't take it anymore, uh, that's one of the reasons that a couple of years ago I started using a a fixed index annuity. Uh, it's a special type of annuity that allows you to um, participate in stock markets, net of all your expenses, which are significant, but the saving grace is. They have a guaranteed uh, schedule of income that you can get that's really competitive. I mean, it's very high. Uh, it depends on your age, uh, but even the younger people. I think I bought mine almost two years ago now, and um, and I'm really glad I had it because between that and Social Security, you know, that that's all. I, I don't need anything else. Yeah, so it's um, it's a good feeling. To know that no matter what's happening in the stock market doesn't really matter. You know, it's not going to affect my lifestyle. And uh, so, if you'd like to uh, have a conversation about that for yourself, uh, feel free to go to my website and uh, send us the, uh, a note. We'll try to get. You, we'll try to call you back as quick as we can. Um, you can just call and leave a message if you'd like. Three three zero six six four zero seven hundred is the number. That's also on BullingtonCapital.com. And again, it's three three zero six six four zero seven hundred, and uh, I think it's a uh, uh, I think it's a pretty good time. In fact, I was reading, you know, some of the going back and rereading some of the stuff that Peter Lynch had talked about just a few months ago, and he was talking about how he liked stocks at these levels, and I understand what he's saying. If you look at valuations, a lot of the stocks there are a lot of stocks that aren't overpriced. The ones that 
are overpriced, unfortunately, have a big impact on funds, uh, particularly index funds like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, uh, the Dow Jones, uh, the S&P 2000, I'm sorry, the Russell 2000, That's those are considered smaller companies. The Russell 2500 considered mid-cap companies. S&P has their versions of that, but they don't include as many stocks. But when you look at all those and you look at the valuation, yeah, they're they're like right in the middle of a normal range. And uh, so what does that mean? Well, if it goes down 25%, they're going to be undervalued. <laughs> if, if they go up 25%, then you go, all right, maybe I'll wait, you know, before I add any more money to the stock portion of my money. And uh, it, the easiest thing to do, incidentally, for uh, most people is to set up with your – get with your advisor. Get, give them a call. The, uh, it, it's so funny. I, I spend – probably half of my time reaching out to clients that don't reach back. And I am just flabbergasted. It's, it's, it's an unbelievable amount of time, effort, and energy that it takes just to prepare uh, what I want to talk about. And then <laughs> it's like I'm the only one that's interested. The, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, what's nice about today is, I mean, if you go, if you log on to any of your uh, custodians, the major custodians out there, uh, you can see, you can pull up your statements now going back several years. Some of them go back from the very beginning of when you first opened the account, which they are not required to do, by the way. Yeah, there's only a, there's a limited time that they are required. It depends on what they're doing, what kind of firm it is. But um, the vast majority of them have to keep it for at least five years. And uh, so you can go back and Look and see, you know, where was I five years ago? Where am I today? Uh, if you look at the last statement that you get, it kind of summarizes all of the activity for the entire year. And uh, so it's pretty easy to go back and look at those last year-end statements and say, okay, this is where I was. This is where it, how much it changed by. Uh, here's how much I took out. Here's how much I added to it the, uh, to get the actual Rates of returns on that are going to be a little more difficult. I haven't, I really haven't found one of those yet that I haven't had some issues with where um, you have to go up, contact the company and say, hey, you need to correct that. So, uh, but it's getting less and less common. It used to be significantly more uh, work because you'd find stuff fairly frequently, but that the vast majority of that is actually gone now. So, Anyway, I was just looking at the Russell 3000 uh, index. That's the S&P 500 plus the Russell 2500, which is all the other stocks. <laughs> and again, this is 99%, and it looks a lot like the S&P 500 I mean, because it's got the same stocks in there. They're just they just invested in them a little bit differently. They have different weighting in them. The S&P is much more heavily affected by the top 50 stocks. And those top 50 stocks, by the way, because of the S&P and because it's been so popular and because there have been so many funds adopting that strategy for investing, uh, it's over the past five years especially, it's been incredibly difficult to beat. And it's not because it's the best or the most undervalued. It's been because it's the most popular. Now, I know a lot of people out there are saying, well, what's the difference? Uh, well... If you keep putting money into something, it's going to keep going up all the way until it doesn't. <laughs> and then there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. And uh, uh, so you still need uh, more diversification, I, I feel like. And uh, quite frankly, um, we are governed by a set of rules that uh, you know we get audited. And if you're not following those rules and it's not in writing that you said this was okay to do this, and uh, there's going to be a problem for your advisor there. So the vast majority of firms um, probably don't keep up with the S&P. But I, I'm going to tell you it's going to be 19 out of 20 because that's not their goal. And they're not even allowed to have that goal. But if, yeah, if you're in your 40s 
and you open an aggressive portfolio and say, yep, I want all this money invested in aggress- uh, I want all this invested aggressively. Then they can do that. You, know, you can go 100% stock. You can just go with the high flyers, the ones that are going up the fastest, and uh, or the ones that are going up the fastest that also pay dividends. You can do whatever you want. But as an advisor, you know, we're re- required to talk about how much risk you're taking. What would be the potential outcome if you had a big correction like you did in the late, uh, you know, early part of 2000? I mean, from 2000 to 2003, I think this, it was three years. Three years, the market had uh, just gone lower. And when it did rally, got everybody excited, and then it turned around and went lower than it had stopped at the last time. We call that lower lows and lower highs. Uh, markets don't, don't move in straight lines. They zigzag. So if the lows are getting lower and the highs are getting lower, that means you're in a bear market. That market's gone down. And the problem with that is not so much – it's not a big problem if you're in your 40s. It's when you're in your uh, upper 50s, uh, mid to upper 50s, and especially when you get into your 60s. You can't afford a 10-year period where the market doesn't make any money if you're invested in stocks. It's just you can't you can't go through that. So what's the answer? Most people think the answer is, well, you know when to get out and when to get back in. No, that's called market timing. And and just uh, you know, I kept saying in the past, Google the success rate of market timers. Almost none of them have positive track records, and 99% of them get beat by the S&P 500. And in the long run, a lot of them are going to get beat by a regular balance fund. And I'm talking about just a balance fund that where there's no thought to it, where, <laughs> where there's a computer. In fact, a lot of the computer run, computer-run funds do incredibly well. I mean, they put, look at the uh, algorithms there, the, the mathematical formulas that they're using to pick the stock. Like, let, let's say we're going to invest in companies, we're going to divide up the entire stock market and put it in thirds. The largest one-third is going to be large cap. The middle one-third is going to be mid cap. The smallest – and that, by the way, there are firms out there that, that actually use those parameters. And um, there are actually some ETFs that use those. But if we divided all those up to see which ones were going to do the best, and then we started adding stuff like, okay, you got to be in that top group, but we only want those who have sales that have gone up over the past three years. And we only want those that are profitable. And we only want those that pay a dividend. So those are three other factors. And there are, there are several versions of what I just described, uh, several funds out there that actually do that. In fact, we hold a couple of them. Um, it's a, uh, uh, it does get very confusing, I promise. Uh, if you haven't done this for an incredibly long time, the, the average investor thinks that you just buy the ones that have gone up the most over the past three, five, and ten years. Well, what you're going to find is that those are most of the returns have been within the last three years. Uh, a lot of those funds have had tremendous luck. Uh, when that luck runs out and you're holding it, and that's how you pick the fund, you're going to be sorry. <laughs> so you've got to know a little bit more than just what are the track records because. That only tells you what they've done in the past. It doesn't tell you what it's going to do in the future. And in fact, a lot of the ones that have done pretty poorly in the past uh, eventually come around and end up leading, and then they will be the top performers over the past one, three, five years. So um, very frustrating for somebody that doesn't do this a lot. You know? And it's actually frustrating for those of us that do uh, because – yeah, we everybody wishes they could buy the top performing fund and it stays the top performing fund. Um, one of the reasons that I diversify like a lot, and uh, I've got oh, I probably have all the three thousand stocks in the funds that I'm using based on the diversification that we have. It's just that they've got waiting. Like one of my models is a healthcare model. And healthcare stocks have taken a pretty good whack over the past couple of years, have not kept up with the market. But if you look out of the, over the past 10 years, it blows it away. It's not even close. Okay. So is, if I've got a bad three years, is it time to throw out healthcare? 
Not really. Yeah, because I mean, look at the population. Uh, population's growing older uh, every day. You know, you get 10,000 people turning 60, and uh, um, that's pretty amazing. I used to talk about this a whole lot more now that I'm actually past that point. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are the fastest growing segment of the population. And so what, why is that so important? Well, because your body starts to wear out. I have a, uh, some old football injuries that have flared up in the past couple of years. Nothing uh, uh, debilitating, but just a little aggravating. You know, get some tingling in your foot because you pull your ligaments in that ankle so many times. You had to wear a cast for, for almost a year straight. And, uh, you know, that stuff comes back to haunt you. I, I, I thought all those older guys were kidding when they were... <laughs> When I was a young man, that can't, yeah, that can't be true. <laughs> Turns out they were underestimating or uh, not giving it enough credit. But uh, anyway, so that's why I like having the medical, despite the fact that it hasn't done well. You look at any market, uh, any of the funds that represent sectors uh, or indexes, they have long periods where they just don't do that well. Now, look at even at the S&P 500. This is going back to December of 2021. Okay. We just got past that uh, uh, at the beginning of the year. That, that took two whole years to make back up. And by the way, that's completely normal. And I'm surprised that after all these years, uh, that I'm still talking about this stuff on the radio. Yeah, I would have thought that, you know, everybody just accepts it. And uh, evidently I was wrong. <laughs> and I know it's a tough thing to try to accept. And by the way, if you're going to put up with the volatility, you want to make sure you're there to capture the reward. If you put up with the risk, you want to hang in there so you capture the reward. Now, um, in order to be able to capture that, you've got to keep confident. you got to know that, hey, this is just normal. What's going on right now is just normal. It's one of the reasons I have a job because I would hate to have to put the kind of time I put in to, to learn all this stuff. If I were working another job, that would be incredibly difficult. But uh, i got about 60 seconds before I have to take a real quick commercial break. And uh, when we come back, we'll talk about uh, some fixed income and uh, how you might combine fixed income with your stocks over the next five or ten years to uh, try to maximize your returns while cutting back on some risk. This is Bill Bullington. I'm right here on 1420. I'll be back right after these commercial messages. I've got a lot in my past, got a lot on my mind. There's a lot of things I want back. There's a lot of me I don't like. But I could just Let's face it. There's a reason Cleveland homes have a stormwater drain line. Basement flooding can be a real issue thanks to Lake Erie and spring showers. Now, we hope it's not a problem for your home, but if it is, you know what we're talking about. And you probably have a sump pump installed, if not more. What we'd love to do for you is inspect your sump pump for free because we don't want you to discover problems after things get wet. We'll ensure your pump powers up, turns on, pumps water, is sized properly, and has and collected debris in the basin or sump. A full inspection at no cost to you. And if any problems do turn up, you'll have just saved yourself some real spring shower headaches. And our straight talking, hard working, do it right plumbers will show you the issue. And explain all your options for a fix. Because no Cleveland homeowner should get surprised by basement flooding. So call for a free sump pump inspection and consider it done at whyitworks.com. You listen to this radio station for truth at a time when truth is an endangered species. Now, we want to invite you to listen to our sister TV network, Salem News Channel. You'll find us in the App Store or online at SalemNewsChannel.com or on Roku or similar devices. You'll see Hugh Hewitt in the morning, followed by Mike Gallagher. You'll see Dennis Prager, followed by Sebastian Gorka. And at 5 Eastern Time, our newest star, Andrew Wilkow, with Dinesh D'Souza at 7 Eastern. Salem News Channel, the antidote to the mainstream media. 
No doubt about it, we're spending more time at home, which is the perfect time to make it more functional and beautiful. Hi, Ed Flash Ferrens here for Artistic Renovations, Northeast Ohio's premier and award-winning remodeler. Artistic did a fantastic job with our kitchen in 2016, and last year, they were back for the master bath. Oh, my word. Do yourself a favor and go to ArtisticReno.com. Believe me, you'll love their ideas and without question the finished product. For a virtual consultation, call 216-520-0838 or visit ArtisticReno.com. You've heard the saying, all good things come to an end. Well, not always. Sometimes they just take a break. That's what's happening with our Lady of the Wayside's car donation program after 24 years and 96,000 rides donated. Pretty amazing. Here's the story. The car lot's owner has sold the property, making it impossible for car donations to be accepted at this time. According to the Wayside CEO, Terry Davis, the next right steps will be determined and communicated soon. So stay tuned. In the meantime, Terry and the entire team at the Wayside thank you for your continued support of the 450 individuals with developmental disabilities in the Wayside's care. And please take note, you can still support them by making a donation at thewayside.org. Thinking about updating your home? Well, Joyce Factory Direct specializes in replacing old, outdated windows. Proudly made right here in Cleveland, Joyce Windows features their exclusive Smart Shield High Performance Glass, which means you'll be getting the most energy-efficient windows for your home directly from the factory. Customers just love how much warmer their house is and how easy their new windows operate and clean. Right now, you can save 50% on all installations. Just call to schedule a free consultation with on-the-spot pricing, 440-243-5700, or visit JoyceFactoryDirect.com. Well, welcome back. Uh, it's been a, a long week for some reason, uh, like I've talked about it a little bit earlier on the show. Hey, I just ran a scan, the scan I like to run for looking for stocks that are going up right now. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, some of them, there's an energy stock at the utilities, NRG. Um, it looks like the left-hand side of Mount Everest right now, if you go back to 2023. Uh, it's actually, I think, it, yeah, there. Its all-time high was about 51 bucks. It's 83. The all-time high was hit for the first time in 2007, and it took it up until 2000. Looks like 19 to get close to that level. Then it pulled back again. Then it came back, and so for the past past oh five years, it's actually gone sideways, very volatile, volatilely. Uh, Am I saying that correctly? It doesn't matter. Anyway, it broke out uh, a little bit earlier last year, and it's just been on a run. And the reason I'm bringing it up is that its price-to-sales ratio is 0.5. If you don't know what the price-to-sales ratio is, don't worry about it. Um, I'm actually going to write a little booklet about it so that you can uh, use it. it. It's just a uh, it's a figure that you can use to look up a stock and to see get an idea of how uh, – how expensive or how inexpensive it might be selling for. You know, it's, it's a gauge, in other words. And it's my favorite. Um, there are some reasons for that, but uh, when I get this uh, uh, report out, I'll let let y'all know. You'll be, you, you'll be able to download it for free. And uh, uh, anyway, it's very, very, very helpful. Can keep you out of a lot of trouble. I, I get people calling occasionally about individual stocks, and this is. By the way, the, the information uh, on a price and sales ratio, that is like the smallest thing that you should know, in my opinion, about financial statements. Because if you get really good at that, uh, every industry's got one that's a little bit different. And some businesses that aren't similar to other industries, there are lots of them out there because they're conglomerates. They've got multiple business lines going. Um, they're harder, by the way, to evaluate, but the uh, but you can take this and you can look. It's kind of like price per square foot in real estate. You know, the price per square foot matters uh, across the entire country. I'm not sure you'd want to use that depending on where you're looking at because some areas, it's, it's price per square foot is just higher than it is in others. So when you're looking for a house, uh, or you're trying to sell a house, you look at what the houses have sold for close to you. You look at what their price. Let, let me give an example. Let's say a house was uh, 
a thousand square feet, and I'm doing this to keep the math simple. The uh, at a thousand square feet, if you're uh, if the average home sale in that neighborhood is a hundred dollars a square foot, well, guess what? That's about a hundred thousand bucks. Okay. Now I know that would be a neighborhood from the 1950s. It will be from a long time ago because uh, most houses are not selling for $100 a square foot anymore. They're actually selling for more than that. And, of course, it depends on where you are. But it gives you a gauge. So let's, how do you use that? If you came in and you saw a piece of property that was selling for two or three times more than the average price per square foot than all the other houses in that neighborhood, you got to stop and start to question that. Why is that happening? And it's the same thing with stocks. If I got a company that's got a price to sales ratio. What does that mean? Or if I look at the total value of the company's stock right now and I compare it to the amount of sales that they're doing, and it's only half. So if a company were doing a hundred million dollars in sales, by the way, would make it a micro cap today. Hard to believe, but it was only selling for fifty million bucks. That might be a good deal, especially if all the other companies in that industry were selling for 150 to 200 million. Okay. Now, why would they do that? Well, because they're profitable. They're more profitable. The more profitable it is, the higher the price it's going to demand. So, if I see this one that's only selling at 50, and it's supposed to be selling, it, the others and their their competitors are selling for 150 to 200. I have to find out. What is wrong? There's obviously something that's keeping that stock price down because they normally don't sell at that big of a discount. But if they're selling where they should be, and this is what your portfolio managers are doing, and this is what a lot of the exchange-traded funds are doing today, um, and they're doing it by computer, and I'd almost rather have it done that way. I'm, in fact, I would rather have it done that way. I've got only a handful of stocks anymore because the same math – that I would look for is being looked for by these computers and they're going out and they're picking these stocks and they're putting them together. And uh, I can understand much more how the group is supposed to behave. And uh, then I just watch those. And by the way, you can download the holding in any of those funds. And if you were looking to pick individual stock, that's basically what I would do. Uh, we'll have to I'll have to do a seminar on that. Uh, we'll get one set up in the next two weeks. Okay, it'll be sometime in the summer, um, maybe uh, maybe early fall, right after uh, the beginning of September, right after Labor Day. That might be a good one. And because this this stuff is available, even if you're not going to do it, it it does require everything requires time today. Yeah, it's it's always required a lot of time. But if you like doing it, uh, if you're just you want to learn more about investing just so that you're more comfortable investing. That, that's a big deal. Nine out of ten people who end up underperforming the market, I would be willing to bet, are doing so. By almost everybody's going to underperform the stock market because you're not going to put 100% of your money in stocks. Now that's so really hard to do <laughs> to uh, beat the stock market stock market when you're holding bonds and short-term cash it just you know it's hard to do when you're holding 100 percent stock so and if you were uh going to then you still want those that have the potential to have better returns in the long run and, and again it, it comes down to what are they doing with the money how are they investing that money size speed and profitability that's i wonder if that should be the name of the book um not really, <laughs> now that I think about it. But those are the three factors that end up mattering the most in a company's life. So if you're looking at making stock investments or stock adjustments, you want to focus on those funds that are using size, speed, and profitability. Uh, I'll, uh, if you want to know more about that, just give me a call, set up a, a phone meeting, or we can meet in person. Uh, not a problem, and we'll come back to that subject a little bit later in today's show. 
because uh, I, I do want to finish. Uh, I started an example. Somebody who's going to be 67 next year going to uh, be eligible for full Social Security and uh, wants to retire. And whether it's female or male, this one does – this product doesn't differentiate. Uh, some of them will actually – uh, give females a lower rate because they are have it, they have a longer life expectancy, and this one doesn't do that. So that's the other thing about uh, annuities it drives me crazy. There are thousands of products out there, and it is a bear to keep up with them. It just uh, <laughs> it's a lot of effort. Uh, so out of all the ones I I've used over the years, I, I like this one the best. Why? Well, because their schedule is not completely fixed like a CD. It depends on your age. The longer you live, okay, the longer you put off tapping into the income, the higher that guaranteed income goes. Somebody who is uh, 67 or 66 and was going to take it next year, that's the first year they're able to on this particular product, they would get seven thousand seven hundred fifty dollars per per hundred thousand that they put into it. Okay, so that's like seven and three quarters percent. Now, once you start that income, it's going to stay at that level uh, for as long as you live, even if you live to one hundred and fifty. Now, which who knows? By the time you know twenty years from now, they may have something that. Uh, some drug or <laughs> you never know. Boy, these insurance companies are going to be in trouble if they actually ever get that uh, down pat where they extend life expectancy significantly. But uh, they won't be paying as much. These will, and that's the other thing. These are guaranteed at 7000 As long as Nationwide stays in business, they're going to make that payment. And uh, that's another thing. I One of the reasons I like Nationwide above other companies is they have multiple business lines. Uh, this is not the only thing that they do. So in other words, uh, they can have a, a, a bad year uh, with tornadoes somewhere uh, in the country, but all the other lines of business that they have can help them pay that off. If they have a bad year in the financial markets, well, all those other houses and cars that, that didn't get an accident and paid their premiums that year can help pay out on the uh, uh, income that you're receiving. I just think it's a, uh, I think it's safer. So anyway, that's my opinion. But uh, going back to this example, if you were 66, you knew 67 is going to be my full social security year. I'm going to turn the income on at the same time, put a hundred thousand in, I get 7,750 bucks. If I wait, Let's say I wanted to wait until age 68. Some people wait to age 70 to take Social Security. I, I find that more and more frequent. In fact, I met with a uh, uh, a person uh, that I was going to say uh, how what sex it was, but uh, yeah, it was uh, I, I can do that. She's female. I meet with a lot of people, by the way, and was 70 years old, and she looked a lot younger than I do, and I'm. 61. And uh, I was like, wow, you know, that's 70? <laughs> yeah, well, that's amazing. But uh, so she's seven years old. And uh, I was thinking about taking, you know, social security. hadn't taken Social Security yet. She was letting it bill. You know, each year that you don't take it, it goes up at, at, at some point in time. I think it is at age 70, it stops increasing. The guaranteed part, I mean, there's a guaranteed schedule that stops going up. You still get cost of living, and that brings up a question in my mind. I uh, hope I remind myself to bring that back up at a, on a future show. But anyway, so at 70, uh, this person would have gotten, uh, if they put the money in when they're 66, okay, they would get $10,000 a year on top of their Social Security. So that's a big – that's a lot, man. To, to put $100,000 in, you're going to let it sit there for four years. And then you're going to turn the income on. You're going to get 10000 a year. Now, you can turn it on uh, anytime after 12 months. And that if 12 months come, goes by and you want to turn it on, okay, 7750 And by the way, it goes up incrementally each and every 
day. <laughs> Drives me nuts. Um, we have to contact the uh, under what, service department at Nationwide when somebody gets ready to turn it on. That seven thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. That's the minimum. Okay, that's the minimum after twelve months. If you go twelve months in a day, it's going to be uh, depending on how much you've invested in it, uh, a fraction of a percent increase. And uh, if you waited two days, three days, four days, five days, it, it goes up to, uh, a little tiny bit. And the schedule is a, uh, to increase over 10%. Uh, so after a year uh, would go by, it would be roughly 10% higher than it was if you had turned it on the day that you became eligible. And uh, um Makes for a lot of uh, paperwork for us, <laughs> but we're glad to do it. Uh, it's the, uh, I'll tell you, it, it feels pretty good to be able to turn that income on or just to know that when you get to that age, you know, if you're in your early 60s now in, uh, or if you're 66 now, and to know that next year you could turn this on, it's going to be seven and three quarters percent on based on what you started with. That's not the actual APR or anything like that. But uh, if you waited another year, say 68, uh, 8,476, that's the guaranteed schedule. That's that's the worst that it could do. If you got lucky and the market went up a lot, okay, you could you could get more than that. I'm going to tell you that's probably not going to happen uh, because those numbers are pretty high. And I got about 15 seconds before I have to take a commercial break. So you're listening to Bill Bullington right here on 1420. Stay tuned because we'll be right back. Can't escape disappointment. Can't avoid the delay. But I don't have to make feeling down and defeated the place that I stay. Hey friends, whether it's winter snow or spring rain, if you've got cracks in your basement foundation, the water's coming in and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Well, there is, but you've got to take the steps. This is Bob France, and the first step is to call G&J Waterproofing of Cleveland at 440-687-6079. Listen, that water collecting in the basement, that's annoying, but the mold that comes with it, that's downright dangerous. You can't keep breathing that stuff in. Call G&J Waterproofing at 440-687-6079. Harry and his team at G&J are A-rated by the Better Business Bureau and Angie's List, and they've won every service award in the industry. They've also got the best warranty in the business because they do the best job in the business for the best pricing in the business. Call 440-687-6079 for a free inspection. Mention my name, and they'll beat any confirmed competitor's estimate for the same work. Get your basement done right from a company that's right. That's right. These guys are patriots who see things the way you and I see them. G&J Waterproofing of Cleveland, 440-687-6079 today. Do you ever find yourself saying, I need a vacation? Vacation Fixation can help. At Vacation Fixation, we specialize in all-inclusive trips and cruises to Mexico, the Caribbean, and Disney vacations. Why choose us? Our clients book through Vacation Fixation because they are frustrated with online trip brokers and timeshare scams. Whether it's a weekend getaway, a family trip, spring break, or honeymoon, Vacation Fixation will personalize a trip just for you. Want to know the hottest destinations in Cancun, Punta Cana, Jamaica, or Puerto Vallarta? Interested in room upgrades, beach reviews, or details about resort restaurants? How about finding a trip with a direct flight? At Vacation Fixation, we take all of your specific travel requests and shop our suppliers to find the best deal. What's the cost? Our suppliers pay us so you don't have to. Call 330-573-8147 for more details. Or you can visit our website at vacationfixation.com. Or check out the deal of the day on Facebook, Vacation Fixation. Is it finally time to update your bathroom? Bath Planet, a division of Joyce Factory Direct, specializes in replacing and converting old showers and tubs into new beautiful bathrooms in as little as one day. We have transformed thousands of bathrooms just like yours into a spa-like oasis that has homeowners excited to use their new bathtub or shower. Right now, all bath installations are 50% off. So call to schedule a free consultation with on-the-spot pricing. 440-243-5700 or visit JoyceFactoryDirect.com. SOS, I'm a castaway, trying to make it back home. Hope is far and I'm losing faith. And we're back. 
Hey, this is Bill Bullington. I'm here every Saturday morning from 11 to noon, uh, right here on 1420. Uh, if you have any questions for me, you hear something on the radio that you'd like more information in on, um, feel free to call me, 660, I'm sorry, 330 <laughs> Or you can go to my website, spillingtoncapital.com, and we will try to get back with you as quickly as we possibly can. You know, I cannot remember a time, incidentally, that as much legislation has come out in a short time period. Over the last two years, it's mind-boggling the uh, the changes that they've had in uh, taxes, um, required minimum distributions, and uh, what was the other one? Um, oh, the, the college savings plans. It's just mind-boggling. What Congress has done and passed, over, and nobody's talking about this. You, know, you don't hear this on any of the news channels. And there's some major changes. It's been uh, very difficult to keep up with. And of course, it you know the, mostly favors people who are ex- exceptionally wealthy. Um, but uh, some people are are in the same category. It's given everybody time to think about it, though. But uh, but you know if you're Oh, in your mid 40s, you got kids that are, you know, uh, coming up on their teenage years, and you're looking at uh, college funding and all that stuff. There's almost no time in a day to be able to take a good, hard look at that kind of stuff, and I get it. Yeah, and it, it has really gotten complicated. So, anyway, if you'd like any help with that, I, again, feel free to give us a call, and uh, we'll try to set something up. Um, one of the things I see, and, and um, we're working on this at Bullington Capital, I am not happy with a lot of the tools that I've seen um, that are out there in the market, and I've been testing for years. And you would think that something as menial as an account aggregator uh, would be an easy thing to set up, an easy thing to run. It's not. Uh, the uh, the problem is you've got so many hackers around the world, and you know when you have an, an account aggregate, that, that's a piece of software that you put on your computer. Uh, some of the, a lot of, the, most of the uh, actually, the big firms have the ability to do it. Um, they just don't promote it that heavily because there is an awful lot of uh, cybersecurity that are. You know, you have to have the cybersecurity so that you keep your clients safe. And uh, quite frankly, it's a little spooky. So I can understand why they're not promoting it as heavily as, as they would like to. And uh, you know, if you want it, this is kind of the uh, uh, how I see it in our field. If you want it, yeah, you you can get it, but you're going to work at it really hard, and eventually you're going to stop doing the maintenance on it, and you're just going to give it up. Which is fine. Uh, now, the alternative to that, and something I do, I only have two vendors that I do everything through. And uh, I, I actually have uh, two vendors, and then I have one checking account that's a personal, that's a regular old checking account slush fund. Okay. And uh, I pay all my bills out of one account. Uh, the other account is actually a SEP. It's a retirement plan. And then I have a, a regular traditional bank account. And pretty easy, um, very easy. And that, that's what I was looking for. Now, if they get a good account ag- aggregator that works, technically, this should be able to happen. If you get one that, that works where the links are not constantly breaking, if, if you've fooled around with these, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, where the links are not constantly breaking, where you can get a hold of somebody in tech support pretty quickly uh, when that does happen or you have a problem with it. Because when you sign up for an account ag- aggregator, all your data, er- every well, all the data that you've entered on that company's website is uh, theoretically it's hackable. Now, they'll tell you, oh, no, it's not. You know, we got all the best. Okay, well. If you can write code, somebody else can decode the code that you've written at some point in time. (laughs) 
And I am all for the uh, biometric um, passwords where you have to use voice control. They can read your face. They can see your eyes, your nose. You know, like the things you go through at the airport where you put your face in, uh, in front of it. The uh, That part, that that's coming. That, that will be in the future. Your computer is going to recognize you. And uh, Big Brother is going to know everywhere you are. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to take at least 10 years. So, uh, and, and by 10 years, I'm not going to care if anybody knows where <laughs> where I am. But uh, and neither will anybody else. You'll get, you'll just get used to it, and it'll make these products like uh, say, hey, nationwide. The uh, I want to turn my uh, income on. Can you turn that on for me? The uh, they say, yeah, it'll be a robot. Which account would you like the uh, money deposited into. I'll just use my uh, checking over at XYZ Bank or uh, XYZ brokerage firm. You know, the, the brokerage firms today do almost everything the banks do except for loans. A, uh, that's another, that could be a whole show. A cash management. The cash management through brokerage firms is far superior, in my opinion, to the ones at banks. I use them both. Yeah, the banks only do banking. Uh, with the uh, cash management brokerage accounts, you can invest in stocks, bonds, you know, cash. You can write checks. You can pay bills. I mean, it is mind-boggling all the things that you can do. I I would have never believed all this when I first started in this industry. We did everything by hand, and uh, and it was all written. Uh, and uh, when you opened up an an, an account. You had to write really hard on this paper because it was copying through to eight other copies. Uh, it wasn't something that you punched in online. That, was, that is so funny uh, to think I'm, I'm probably scaring everybody about how old I am, but uh, that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> about 20 years. The, uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's only 20 years. So I guess uh, if you're a freshman in college, it does seem like an awfully long time. That's, that's the year before you were born probably. But uh, anyway, it's going to change continuously, and I think it's going to improve. Uh, I think it's going to get a little bit easier, a little bit better. Uh, so I'm not uh, too upset by it. I think uh, you know it's got a long way to go, which is good because that's going to it's going to take a ton of people, ton of programmers, a uh, ton of people who are uh, data security, the uh, uh, the job growth. In other words, there's going to be a lot of job growth in that industry. And that's spilled over into everything, by the way. That's one of the things that uh, I sometimes have to remind myself. When you have job growth in an industry, uh, it affects all the other industries that are in existence because the people that are working in those industries live in housing, uh, probably driving a car, they eat food, and hopefully they're wearing clothing. Yeah, uh, that is a horrible joke. I gotta stop doing that. But anyway, uh, they contribute, in other words, to the whole of GDP. Uh, even though that group may be uh, advancing faster, the income may be higher there, but it still contributes to all the other uh, industries that are in place today, especially the service industry. And uh, so can't have GDP growth that only affects one part of the economy. It just doesn't work that way. And uh, it, uh, it is a good thing. That's a really good thing. And if you are uh, – actually, I should probably uh, lean this stuff up. Um, I will start I, – I think I'm going to start next week. I had to rewrite some scans that I normally run on the stock market. And uh, I look at it it's like one of those things that's uh, very – um, habit forming, and uh, I'll talk about that more on future shows. But there are there are quite a few companies coming up on the scans, and this one just reminded me of uh, Charlie Munger. He was Warren Buffett's long term time uh, friend and, and business partners. They did a lot of stuff together. He passed away recently, and he was always talking about Costco. Yeah, he really liked Costco. I liked how they were running. And I get it. You look at their financial statements. Yeah, it's a, it's a great company. Um, I was never super impressed with the 
uh, valuation, I always thought the valuation was a little bit on the high side. Well, it just made an all-time high, $787 uh, at the, let's see, in 2022, when the market was dropping like a rock, got down to 400 bucks. So that is almost a double, which is pretty good. Uh, symbol is cost, COSD. The price to sales ratio is 1.29. A little bit high for the business that they're in, but those guys are are so profitable. They do such a good job. Um, their profit margins aren't huge. I mean, when you look at software profit margins, they blow away just about everything else on the planet. But uh, anyway, um, I, it was just interesting to me that you know he just recently passed away, and then his favorite stock shows up on a, on a list that's going up. But uh, but it's still a company. That's not a good reason to buy it, just because he, he liked it. Uh, and all stocks fluctuate a lot. Uh, that's why uh, I don't have a whole ton of money in stocks anymore. They bet here's. If I'm going to buy an individual stock, it's got to be a good value. It's got to be growing. I have to understand uh, what the company does, uh, which rules out a whole bunch of technology stocks. I, I have no idea, you know, what they're doing. But the uh, um, or biotechnology companies that are making some exotic drug for uh, you know something that is afflicting people that I don't even know anything about. So that kind of stuff, I kind of stay away from because I know that those are being held in some of the healthcare funds that I own anyway. And those are done by people who are looking at things like sales growth, profit growth, that kind of stuff. Uh, so, um, and you know what, realistically, all this work over the next five to 10 years, next five to 10 years, there's a really good chance that that nationwide product I was talking about there's a really good chance that it actually beats the stock market. Uh, if you're looking out for more than 10 years, then I would say, you know, you got to stick with the stock market because valuations are not as high as they were in the year 2000. And they're not as high as they were in 2007 through 2008. And the growth rate is really strong. So it depends on your age. It depends on your age, your financial position. You know, if you're, are capable of living off of one or two percent of your ass. That's that. You could put it all in stock. Yeah, no problem. But uh, I think I only have about 15 seconds left here, and uh, I apologize I didn't spend a little bit more time on the fixed uh, income portion. But uh, we'll get that next week, and you can always call me to talk more about it and figure out what you might need to do for your own personal situation. And uh, my website's BullingtonCapital.com, and with that. I'm going to let you guys run. I hope you have a good weekend, good investing, and good luck. just caught another edition of the Bullington Capital Report, broadcasting every Saturday at 11 a.m. on AM 1420, The Answer. If you have a question and you'd like to speak to Bill personally, you can call him at 330-664-0700. That's 330-664-0700. Or online at BullingtonCapital.com. That's BullingtonCapital.com. The preceding program has been paid for by Bullington Capital Management, LLC.